Hi, this is Rick for EDU Mobile. Now we're going to talk about arrays and a little bit about tuples. But we'll get to tuples after we talk about arrays for a time. So in Swift, we have two basic collection types. These are arrays and dictionaries. Arrays are ordered collections of elements where all of the elements have the same type. This is different from the Objective-C concept of an NS array where all the elements are objects, uh, but they don't all have to be of the same class. Dictionaries are unordered collections of key value pairs. All the keys have to have the same type, and all the values have to have the same type, but the keys and the values do not have to be of the same type. Arrays and dictionaries in Swift are both implemented as generics, so if you know what I just said, that's great. If you don't, we'll learn about it a little bit later. Okay, so we're concentrating on arrays. The type of an array is array generic T, where T is the type of the array's elements. There is a shorthand form where we just wrap the type in brackets, and this is the preferred form for coding in Swift. These two types below are identical though, array of string and brackets string. These are both arrays of strings. So we'll use the second uh, bracket string form uh, as we go forth uh, with Swift. So an array literal is a collection of values, a list of values separated by commas and enclosed in square brackets. So here we have an array. Uh, these would be inferred to be of type int 9, 3, and 2. These are ordered. Uh, the first element in this array is 9, the second is 3, and the third is 2 but the index are zero based. So uh, this array sub zero is nine and so forth. So we declare an array, and these are both typed arrays, they really don't have to be, uh, because type inference works, but we declare an array, the full form var colors, an array of string is red, green, and blue. Uh, let primes, an immutable array of integers, is two, three, five, and seven. An array is declared with as, as mutable by using the var keyword. And an immutable array is declared with the let keyword. What does mutable and immutable mean? The same thing they mean in Objective-C. But we don't have things like Objective-C's NS mutable array and NS array to distinguish these. It's just how you declare it. Declare it with a var, it's variable. Declare it with a let, it's constant. Therefore, it's immutable with a let and variable or mutable with a var. Now, as I already said, the type of an array is inferred by the types of its elements. So if you initialize an array in its declaration, the type is not required. Var colors could just as easily have been initialized red, green, blue without the colon string uh, to tell us that these are all strings. However, we can't say var colors equal red, green, and the integer 19 because all the elements in an array have to be the same type. So how many elements? Well, we can use the property count of an array to determine the number of elements in an array. So let's say we have an array that we're going to talk about a lot here called favorite numbers and they are 3, 7, 9, and 62 for some reason. I don't know why. But we can go how many is favorite numbers dot count. And this will give us back an integer telling us how many elements are in the array. We can also find out if an array is empty using a convenience property is empty. And this gives us back a boolean. So print line favorite numbers dot is empty will print false. This is a convenience uh, property because we could of course check to see if the count property were equal to zero but we don't have to do that with is empty. How do we append to an array? Appending is an operation where we're going to add something to the end of the array. So to add an element again to a mutable array we can use the append method. Favorite numbers append 81 would add 81 to the end of the array. We can also use the plus equal operator as a shorthand for append. 
favorite numbers plus equal 81. This will do the same thing. This will append 81 to the end of the array. Now, values appended to an array, of course, must be the same type as all of the elements in the array. For favorite numbers, we can't append the string red uh, because that won't work. We'll get an error. So, subscripting. Of course, we can obtain an element of an array by providing its index as a subscript. So here we say let number equal favorite numbers 3. And if we look in the favorite numbers array, the integer at the index 3 is 62. Array subscripts, once again, forever, are zero based. So here is our favorite numbers array as it currently stands. Uh, favorite numbers sub 0 is 3. Favorite numbers sub 3 is 62, and so forth. Now we can also insert and remove elements from an array. We use insert at index to add an element to a specific array index. So before, our favorite numbers looks like this. After this operation, favorite numbers dot insert 8 at index 2, index 2 gets the value of 8. This is an insertion, not a replacement. If we wanted to replace, we could just say favorite numbers sub 2 equal 8. What insert does is it inserts 8, in this case, at the index, and then scoots everything out. And 81, which was previously having index 4, now has index 5, because everything else has been scooted out in the array. There's also remove at index. If we said uh, favorite numbers dot remove at index 2, favorite numbers would now look like it does in the first picture of the array. Remove at index removes something out of the array and then compresses the array to take the place of what was removed. And also, we can use remove last to take off the last element of the array. So if we look at uh, favorite numbers as it is in the first picture above and call remove last on favorite numbers, then we would have indexes 0, 1, 2, and 3 and values 3, 7, 9, and 62. So the index 4 containing the value of 81 would have been removed by calling remove last. We can iterate over an array. We can iterate through the values of an array using the for in loop. So here we have a variable sum set to integer equal to 0 for number in favorite numbers. So we have the favorite numbers array. Now we're just going to add up the sum of all of our favorite numbers and then print it out. The type of number in that for loop is inferred from the type of the elements in the favorite numbers array. So favorite numbers is an array of ints. Number is an int. That's how that works. So that's really about all there is to an array. There's a couple of other things that we're going to talk about in the demo. There's a little bit more, but we'll pick up everything that we can do with Swift arrays um, as we go through the course. Now we're going to talk about tuples. A tuple is an ordered collection, but it's not an array. A tuple is an ordered collection of values of the same or different types, but don't get excited because you can't manipulate tuples like you can manipulate arrays. Tuples uh, only glancingly have things like indexes. We can't append to a tuple. We can't insert at index with a tuple. We can't do all of that array stuff that we, can, that we could do with arrays. We can't do that with tuples, so don't get too excited. A tuple's values are enclosed in parents, not square brackets. So here we have a tuple called my tuple, which is 9, an integer 9, the string 9, and then the double 9.0. The type of this particular tuple is int string double. And this kind of tells you why we can't append to this, because the full type name of this thing is int string double. We append to this, uh, it's not int string double anymore. Uh, I have broken my type, it crashes, it's bad. The only access we have to my tuple, this particular tuple, is by using pseudo properties dot zero, dot one, and dot two. Dot zero would give us back the integer nine, dot one would give us the string nine, and dot two would give us 
uh, the double 9.0. So you might be asking yourself, well, that's really great. What good is it? Well, one thing we can do is provide names for each value in a tuple. Uh, that makes the elements easier to access. It doesn't make it any more powerful at first glance, but it really kind of makes stuff easier to get to. So here we have another tuple declared uh, to be of types uh, string and double, or car, character, and double, if you will. Uh, this, however, has names. The first element, if you will, in this tuple is called element, and the second element is weight. And of course, this is hydrogen with an atomic rate of 1.00794. The type of this tuple is string double, but the names allow us to access it. Another tuple dot element will give us back the H. Another tuple dot weight will give us back the atomic weight. And that's really, again, all there is to tuples. But their power is in how they can be used. And what do I mean by that? Tuples can be returned from functions. This is the major use uh, in Swift, or the most powerful use in Swift for a tuple. All right, you got it? Yeah, if we want to change multiple values in a function, we don't have to use pass by reference anymore to do it. We can, and we've shown you how to do that with in-out parameters, but if you want to get a function to, quote, return multiple values, you can return them in a tuple containing as many values as you want. And this is an exciting thing. We can pass tuples into functions, manipulate them, and return them back out. We can generate tuples in functions or methods and return them to be used by some other function or method. Think about that because it's extremely powerful and many things that we do in Swift rely on the concept of being able to return a tuple from a method or a function. Thank you very much.